Hey there, Virgo. Welcome to your reading for um, the week of December 19th. We're just going to jump right in here, Virgo, and we are going to see uh, what is going on for you. We're going to do just like a regular old Celtic cross here. Um, you start off with that Nine of Wands in your current general energies, and the Nine of Wands can represent like putting up some boundaries uh, or kind of having your boundaries in place. To me, it's also a card of experimentation. I really feel you need to get out of your head, Virgo. Um, you know, the tower is showing up in the area of your thoughts here. And so, you know, what I would say there is that you could be like fearing a tower moment that number one might not happen. <laughs> we're going to we're going to have to look at this um, reading or you could be trying to kind of like avoid things. I don't know. That's what's popping into my head. But you start off with this nine of wands. Again, nine of wands is a card of the wounded warrior. I do feel like you have experienced like wounds and burdens from the past. It's kind of interesting as well. You end with the five of pentacles, but you know what? This five of pentacles in this deck, the after tarot is what I'm using here. I actually really like the five of pentacles in this deck. <laughs> so I feel like you're kind of walking away from a period of having felt maybe like left out in the cold or like you don't have the things that you need in life or you don't have the nurturing that you need in life or, you know, whatever the case may be, it's different for all of you. But I kind of feel that you're walking away from this lack type of energy. It is interesting that in your crossing energy, you have the Seven of Swords. Um, Seven of Swords, of course, can be lying, cheating, stealing. Some of you could feel that you were like lied to or someone cheated or someone didn't tell you the truth or something like that. Um, but I don't know. You know, on this night, uh, Seven of Swords, he's about to step into this noose here on this card. And, you know, it kind of says like he shouldn't be doing everything on his own. He's trying to maybe take you know steal these swords it, it, it really the seven of swords is a card of tactics he's stealing these swords from this army that's in the background over here but the card itself says maybe you shouldn't do everything on your own maybe you should get the help of other people or maybe there are people who can help you in work and business and your love life whatever the case may be so it kind of says like don't try to do things all on your own uh in the area of your thoughts you have the tower like I said, um, and have been saying, there have been a lot of tower cards coming, you know, coming up over the past few months. This is going to continue for the next um, ten years, Virgo. <laughs> so, and you think I'm kidding, but uh, you know, I don't know. Come back to me in ten years. Come back to me in 2033, right? Um, hopefully, I'll have my beach body by then as well. But you know, what I would say to you, Virgo, is that you know, the, I I think there's just going to be a lot of truths and lies and tower moments coming out really i feel like the tower is a good thing because you know the reason the tower falls is so that everybody can see reality in the first place you know these people that were in the tower they've been ignoring reality for too long and that's why they're being brought back down to earth they're being grounded into reality so i do feel some of you have maybe recently in the recent past had some sort of you know, reality experience where you had to see something that for what it actually is. And what's interesting is in your foundation, you have the fool. The fool kind of is saying to me, get up and go. I kind of have this feeling that some of you have already experienced a tower moment. You could be thinking about the tower moment. Could have happened years ago, I feel, for some of you as well. It has something to do with the truth or something. Some of you, it could have been some sort of truth that was exposed. I'm not saying you were lied to or that you were lying or anything like that. I'm just saying it could have been something from darkness that came to light. That's Those are the words that are popping into my head with the tower. So it's like something was exposed, but it's like now it's time for you to get back up. And you, you've been getting the fool with me literally for years. I've been, I started going live in like what, 2017 or something like that, right? I, I Is when I went live every single day. And uh, you know, it's kind of funny that you've been getting this card for since then. Like I remember doing lives back in the day <laughs> and you would always have this card, the fool. I always used to joke about it. But I kind of now get the feeling for you that the fool is saying like, okay, you like went through this darkness, even in the area of your past, you have the moon. So it's like saying to me that you went through this darkness and now it's like time to step into the light. Now it's time to kind of maybe own who you actually are, or it's time for you to own something. Could be like a darker part of yourself as well. And I don't mean this in a bad way. I mean, this in a good way. Like some of you could even be doing shadow work, or maybe you've already done a bunch of shadow work, you've integrated your shadow in some way, or maybe you've been kind of like working on integrating some part of your shadow uh, with this energy. I also feel for some of you that you need to keep going. You know, I feel like you can't give up on something. There, With the moon, 
you know, it's weird on this after tarot how she's like coming back from these mountains back here. But really, you know, the moon is part of the fool's journey and she needs to go to those mountains. The mountains in the tarot represent achievements. The thing with the moon is that these two pillars right here are a warning to the fool to not get off his path. They kind of represent those moments in life where maybe we experience resistance or maybe we're not sure if we're on the right path. Those two pillars are a warning to the fool to keep going towards his original goal, which was to get to those mountains. So I feel like some of you need to keep going. Even here in your uh, your very near future, you have the Ten of Wands. Ten of Wands is about releasing a burden. And you can see here that he has released the burden, <laughs> but he hasn't quite reached his home here. For some of you, again, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I wonder if there's like some sort of disappointment that you experienced very recently. Like I'm talking like last week or I don't know, I'm doing this video on the 13th. So, you know, it could be the week of the 12th or whatever this week was. I don't even know what today is, but you know, it could be this week that you experienced this uh, or something. And what I would say here with the um, 10 of wands is that I feel like you need to keep pushing. Like you can't let some sort of, I do feel this reading is encouraging you to not let some sort of small disappointment get you down. I feel like, you know, especially if you're experiencing a disappointment right now, then I feel this is saying you need to keep going. He's about to, he almost reached his home back here. You know, the story of the 10 of wands is that he planted those wands. The wands are his harvest and he just needs to get to his home so he can have his harvest, so he can have his abundance. So don't give up now. Over the next few months, look, you have the ace of cups, uh, your emotions overflowing, feeling very happy. I feel like you feel like you're not wasting your time as well. Like that's the intuitive message I'm getting on the Ace of Cups. I'm not even getting just love here, even though there's a gigantic heart on this version of the Ace of Cups. I'm getting like a little bit of everything. You know, I feel like some of you are just feeling like your time is being better spent over the next few months. And this could be in work, business, pretty much everywhere. And I feel that you're able to kind of like recharge your batteries in a much better, healthier way in the near future as well. I also feel like a lot of you could be very focused on your health. And again, this could be a good thing, I would say. I feel that you could be focused on like improvements or doing things to improve your health in some way. Again, I'm not a doctor, so do not take this as medical advice. Now for others, I do definitely feel that there could be a love offer coming in for you. Uh, in the area of your closest relationships, you have the five of wands. Five of wands says definitely do not fight in your closest, closest relationships. We're, we're not just talking about love here. We're talking about friends, family, people you live with, whatever. I always say during Mars retrograde, which we have Mars retrograde until, you know, the middle of January, basically. But technically, if you want to be super technical about it, I would not argue with anyone until after March. Um, you know, we're going to be in the shadow till March. We have a bunch of weird energy till March anyway. It actually doesn't get any less weird after that, but still, whatever, it's just different. And so I would say no arguments. The Five Wands also a card of adventure. It's kind of weird because uh, every... Everybody has been getting these readings of adventure. I used to call this card Indiana Jones. To me, it's a card of going on a crazy adventure to find some sort of treasure, to find something that you want or something that you can value in your life. So I feel for some of you, you could be going on like a crazy adventure. You could be, um, you know, experimenting, trying new things in your life. You could be um, doing new things just in general. I also feel like you could be learning a lot. Um, you know, some of you could be kind of like examining a lot of your past relationships and you could be saying like, what did I learn from these things? And that could be helping you a lot in the future. Uh, in your, the area of your future feelings, you have the lovers. You know, what's interesting here, Virgo, is that I feel like you are just feeling in love, um, but it doesn't even have to be love. I feel like you could be feeling in love with work and with the things that you're working on. I also feel like you could be feeling like you're in love with um like some sort of choice that you're making, you know, so if you're uh, kind of like picking a new path in your life, I feel that you're going to feel like you are in love with the path. The other interesting thing is, is look, this higher self angel here has this sword and it's like the sword of truth. So I feel that for some of you there, that you could be, you know, kind of exposing a truth, your own inner truth, or, you know, it's almost like I feel like saying you're not caring as much about the truth, but it's not like, I'm not suggesting that you're lying or that people are lying to you. I, what I mean by that is it's like maybe something was exposed about you with that tower. Clearly, you're thinking about it at this time. And uh, I feel like you're just not caring anymore in a good way. It's like you're taking your power back almost is what I get here. I do, of course, also feel that there could be love coming in for you uh, if you want love. Um, it is interesting as well that you end with the five of pentacles. But again, I like this five of pentacles. This lady, she's like choosing to go <laughs> right here. So these two people are just like sitting there and they're not doing anything. But she's like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go change my life. I'm going to make something happen. 
I'm going to get out of the cold. I'm going to go on this journey. So I feel like some of you are kind of like choosing to, um, you know, pull yourself up, up and out of the darkness is basically what this reading is saying. I don't really think it's that bad. So let's uh, clarify. We're going to see what's going on here. With the Nine of Wands and the Seven of Swords, you have the Four of Swords. Mm, I feel like things have been slow. I feel that things have been the same for you. It's almost like you've been in a holding pattern or maybe you've been, you know, I, I wouldn't even call it Groundhog's Day, but may, I mean, maybe for some of you, it's been like Groundhog's Day, but you know, it just feels like a holding pattern to me. Can we get, I wanna, I, I'm gonna double clarify that. And you have the sun. <laughs> so there's actually a lot of happiness and you go from the moon the moon to the sun over here. So clearly you are stepping into the light. This whole entire reading, thats I've been saying that you have you are stepping into light or something along those lines. So um, basically, exactly what I said here, Virgo, I feel that you're stepping into light or you're stepping into you know, happiness, joy, good things. So uh, I don't know, this is looking good. Uh, you cannot, here you go. With the uh, tower, you have the judgment card. Um, this changes everything, I love it because now, to me, the Tower and the Judgment card is the most powerful combination in the tarot. Uh, to me, it's like a major revelation, a major wake-up call. And so I feel a lot of you could be having like some sort of major wake-up call at this time. And uh, we're going to have to see what it leads to. But, you know, you do have the Sun here. The Sun makes like the entire reading a little bit more positive. With the Fool card, you have the Seven of Pentacles. Mm, I feel like you're leaving a lot of things behind, you know, is what I would say to you. It wouldn't surprise me if at the end of the decade, again, like 2033, somewhere around there, I know that's not the end of the decade, but, you know, astrologically speaking, to me, the end of the decade is not 2030. The end of the decade is going to be 2033. But what I would say here is that I feel that you, by that time, you could look back on this time and you could be like, wow, um, <laughs> a lot has changed. And, you know, you could say like, oh, well, Chris, of course, over 10 years, a lot of stuff changes, but it's like the type of change that you're making that I think is kind of most surprising. It's like maybe you have a lot of ideas of what your future is going to look at look like. And I'm not saying you're that you're wrong, but I just think it's different. So there, you know, major changes coming in for you. The other thing that I'm getting here is that, you know, Seven of Pentacles is my card of is the juice worth the squeeze? It basically says, are these situations that I'm dealing with in life, all situations, are they worth it? And I, I really feel you're taking like a like cold, hard look at all everything that you're dealing with and you're saying you know what like look going up this way i feel like you're releasing burdens and you're saying like what do i love what don't i love it's just that simple and i feel like you're letting go of things that you no longer have the heart for and not in a bad way i mean this in a good way with the moon you have the nine of swords yeah you're leaving behind a never-ending story again it's funny that i said groundhog's day nine of swords is pretty much uh you know having a nightmare waking up being in a nightmare groundhog's day like reliving the same thing over and over and over again so I feel like a lot of you are just done, um, you know, reliving things <laughs> and you're just making a change. I don't see this as a bad thing. I see this as a good thing. With the Ten of Wands, you have the Eight of Cups, walking away from things that no longer serve you. The, um, sorry, not the Ten of Cups, the Eight of Cups is what I meant to say, but I was talking about the Ten of Wands. So I feel that you're releasing things that no longer serve you. It's like you're no longer giving time, effort, and energy to anything that doesn't give time, effort, and energy to you. <clears throat> this goes for work, business, pretty much everything. And so you're making that change. Uh, with the eight ace of cups, you have the knight of pentacles. Definitely could be a love offer from an earth sign coming in for you here if you don't already have it. So some of you might already have love and this is fine. I would just like make sure to look at past love situations with the five of wands and be like, I, I would just really make sure that you're um, kind of learning or that you have learned from the things that you've been through. And this could be the other person as well. Like I would make sure like if you're dealing with a new person that they're not just rushing from one thing to the other. That's what's popping into my head here. For others, I feel again, that you really need to make sure that the things that you're working on, I'm talking about like in work and business and otherwise, that you're like really in love with what you're doing. There's something here about that. It kind of reminds me of a story of uh, Gary Vee and it doesn't matter how you feel about him. He has, I, I don't care, but you know, he has a story about how he was only like 96% happy with his job at one point in his life. So he left. <laughs> and I'm not suggesting you just like up and leave and quit your job or whatever, and then have nothing as a backup plan. Of course not, like have a backup plan. But I do kind of get this feeling here of you looking at things and saying, well, I'm really not happy with the, this, whatever it is, 
could be love, business, or otherwise. And it's like you're making a change, which is a good thing. I feel this is good. With the uh, Five of Wands, you have the Seven of Swords. Mm, some of you could have been dealing with lying, cheating, stealing in relationships. This could be what has brought conflict to a relationship is like lying or cheating. Uh, it could be any relationship though. You know, it could be like a friendship. Maybe they're lying. Maybe you've dealt with a liar in a relationship. And, um, you know, I'm talking about like a friendship or something. And so some of you could be really looking at what you learned from those um, situations. Why is this important here? Chariot. Um, so that you can move away from them. <laughs> Chariot is about like moving away from things that no longer serve you as well. So you could definitely be in the mode of just cutting things out at this time. I also feel that this is kind of allowing you to take control of your life. The chariot is a card of hard control, um, you know, but in a good way. It's like you're taking control of the things that you can control in your life. And uh, the chariot is also about like moving forward, moving on to greener pastures. With the lovers, you have the justice card. Love it. Some of you could be going through divorce or separation, judgment, justice, tower, you know, seven of swords, all this stuff. So that wouldn't really surprise me. But again, uh, I love the justice card right now. I oh, Frequently, I say that the justice card is really the answer to the next like decade or so of our lives. Be again, until like 2033, because justice is cause and effect. We, I, I believe personally, energetically, that we really need to pay very close attention to what we're giving to and what we're getting back from situations. There's a couple of reasons why. Number one, Neptune and Pisces. Number two, in 2025, Neptune moves into Aries, which is like a whole other, you know, you know, whole other bucket of worms. But what I would say there, is that I think it could be very easy for us to get into situations between now and then where we're investing, investing, investing and getting nothing back. We need to be really very, I, I wouldn't, I don't think we need to be paranoid, but I think we just need to make sure that all situations we're entering into are, you know, equal, if not better. <laughs> you know, I would be focusing on better, like as in I put energy into this, I get 10 times more back, right? Maybe not that crazy. And of course, nothing is perfect. But for the most part, can you look at a situation, love, business, and otherwise and say, I am getting, you know, equal or better out of this? If the answer is no, then I would be careful. With the five of pentacles, you have the star. See, I feel like you finally have something to work towards. I feel like you finally have something to work on. You have the sun and the star here. Uh, to me, the sun and the star in a reading is like fame and fortune. Uh, but you could just be waking up to an opportunity with the star card. I feel like you could be waking up to opportunities that like lead to success and abundance. Yeah, you have the ace of swords as well, which is like a victory or success coming in for you. The star is like having something to work towards. It's like having something to work on, you know? The star is like your North Star, your guiding light. And that Ace of Swords, you know, sometimes they say that the Ace of Swords to me is kind of like a laser beam. It's like having just one thing that you point towards and you create it in your life. And so for a lot of you, I feel like your focus is going to be very important here. I also feel a lot of you uh, could be healing with the star because guess what? We go from the tower to the star and the major arcana. And so the star literally represents healing from a tower moment. And some of you could literally be healing from a tower moment. Uh, I'm going to pull five main themes for you now. You have this owl card. It says good advice from a wise person. Uh, it's, um, you know, I do feel it's kind of weird because I like normally for me to say this, I, I would need the king of swords to be in a reading. But I do get like king of swords vibes from this card. And the king of swords could be like a mentor or a person you look up to. It doesn't matter what gender it is. But if you need help with anything in your life, I feel that there could be like experts or mentors or, you know, people you look up to who could be very helpful to you. Uh, next, you have this kite card. It says vacation on it. There's like 10 vacation. I kid you not. I've done four readings so far today and every single person has had a vacation card. <laughs> Cracks me up when this happens because it's like clearly everybody needs a vacation. So if you maybe you can't necessarily go on vacation. Maybe you need a staycation or something like that. I would go for it. Uh, next, you have this moon card. It says changes in your life. So what can we get more details on this change that you're experiencing? You have this fan card. It says romance, celebration, or party. Maybe all three, right? Living like a rock star here, Virgo. Definitely, uh, I feel some of you. I feel you need socializing time because, again, that tower in, in the area of your mind, it's like too much head energy. So I would do something fun. Uh, next, you have this dolphin card. It says financial gain, usually coming from something you did in the past. Mm, I get I get this feeling for you that some of you could be, it's like you could be working on things from the past, but it, I feel you're really taking something from the past and 
kind of injecting new life into it. But that could, you know, number one, that that was a very complicated way of saying you could just be getting a raise or a promotion at your job. You've been doing it since the past, and now it's getting upgraded in some way. But you do have the justice card here. And again, the whole entire reading was really about you looking at situations for fairness and being like, is this worth it or is this not worth it in my life? So sometimes I think when we do that, we're basically demanding our worth, then guess what? The universe moves out of the way and is like, well, they're serious about what they're worth now so they can have whatever they want. <laughs> and that's what's going on here for you, Virgo. Can we clarify this as well? Why the hell not? You have this whale. It says, great worry over nothing. Like two animals that are very similar but different. So stop worrying about finances. Uh, finally, you have this flute card. It says, disappointment in a friend or a lover. We saw this in this reading. I really feel if you're experiencing disappointment with a friend or a lover that you could be walking away. I also feel like you need to trust it. I'm getting a very specific story. Like, you know, it's like anytime I've regretted anything in a relationship personally, it's when I didn't trust myself. Like when I saw something and I was like, oh no, it's fine. <laughs> and it wasn't fine, right, Virgo? I kind of have one of those situations popping into my head where it's like maybe someone tells you a little white lie. What do white lies usually lead to? Much bigger lies, right? So it's like, you know, I can think back to situations where people lied to me and I kind of just brushed it off because it was like small, but really they were just a big, huge liar. So I feel like you could, some of you could have experienced that recently. We're going to clarify that too. Why not? Uh, you have this handshake card. It says meeting with a stranger could be important. So it could be a stranger that lies to you, but um, you know, it could be an agreement as well that someone is lying about. It could be marriage because marriage is kind of like an agreement. But um, for others, you know, again, I would be careful of that, especially in love. You know, maybe someone told you a little bit of a lie, but maybe it's like symptom of a much bigger problem. But other than that, really good reading. So thank you for being here and definitely enjoy your week.